hi guys you're welcome back to another beautiful tutorial in today's video we're learning how to cut and sew this beautiful two-piece that i'm wearing so if you want to learn how this was made please keep watching remember to subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up so this is the fabric that i'll be using this is a very thick um, polo fabric i don't know the exact name but i know it's a polo fabric so i'm going to go ahead and check which side is the stretchy part the, the both sides are stretchy but i'm going to use the most stretchy part for the width and the less stretchy part for the length now i'm going ahead to fold my fabric as you can see what i'm doing i'm going to fold into four Now this polo is not a normal polo, it's a kimono polo. So I'm going to go ahead and measure the width I have here and I have about 12 and a half inches and I think that is enough for me. I'm going to properly arrange my fabrics before I start imputing my measurements. So now I'm going to use my ruler to mark out an imaginary line. This will be the start of my measurement. I'm using length 30 inches for the polo. Thirty inches. Now at the shoulder line, I'm going to come down by one inch. I'm going to use three inches for my neck opening. Or I might just use three and a half. I ended up using three and a half. For the front neckline i'm going to use for the back i used one inch and for the front i used four inches for the neck depth now i'm using my french line my french curve to give it the perfect curve now next thing i want to do is to slant my shoulder And what I have is 12 inches. 12 inches is okay. Remember, this is a kimono polo. This is not like a normal polo. So I have excessive for the um, shoulder line. Now I'm going to come down by 10 inches. Um, now we want to work on the sleeve part. Now, if you come down by 10 inches, it depends on how big you want it to be, or you come or you use um 10 inches for the sleeve and um, nine inches so as for me i'm going to use nine inches for my sleeve and then that 10 inches is for my bust line so this is my bust point my bust point is 11 inches so i'm going to come here and impute my bust measurement so i used 11 as my bust and I'm going to get my French curve and connect it to my sleeve. Now the next thing I want to do is to get my hip curve. I like to use my hip curve to do this. I'm going to get my hip curve and just connect, join it from the bust to 
the length of my blouse so this is it you can use a stretch ruler though but as for me i like to use my hip curve okay so this is me showing you that you can use a straight ruler but now nah, i prefer to use my hip curve so now it's time to cut it I hope you understood everything that I said. This is a kimono polo. On a normal, my shoulder should be 8 inches, which is 16. But I used 12 inches, which is 24 for this. So when you open it, you take out one piece for the back. And you're going to fold the other one right back. And then you're going to cut your front neckline. So the other part automatically becomes your back panel while this one becomes the front panel so another thing i also want the back to be longer than the front with a little bit of some inches so i'm going to go ahead and mark out how many i want you could do two inches you could do one and a half but as for me i'm going to do one inch i don't want the margin to be too much I'll trim it off and yeah that is it for our front pattern and the other one is the back pattern now let's go ahead and cut the attachment for the sleeve now since we already have some part of the sleeve joined to the bodies we're going to cut out um, also a little attachment um, for the sleeve So you're going to fold this and you're going to just cut out a rectangle of about 7 inches. You're going to cut out um, 7 inches length and 9 inches which is 18 inches width. Remember what we use for our arm for our um, sleeve length for our armhole is 9 inches. So we're going to go ahead and measure 9 inches by 7. now we're going to cut it so this is the attachment we're going to add to the sleeve Okay, so now before we work on the neck, we are going to cut out our shorts first. Let's, let's cut out our shorts before we work on the neckline for the, the blouse, the pull of the top. And my fabric is still folded into two the way it was. Not into four this time, it's into two now. I'm going to go ahead and mark out imaginary line this always helps in case you're having shortage of um, fabric at the bottom you're going to the imaginary line will help you know where to start your measurements and be sure you're having um, exactly what you have on top at the bottom so the length of my blouse the length of my shirt I want it to be 16 inches and then when you cut measure 16 inches 
you're going to add one inch for hemming which will make it 17 inches and you're also going to add extra three inches for the band which will make it 20 inches So now for the crotch length, I'm going to be using 14 inches. 14 inches because the I'm not going to be cutting out extra um, waist for this. 14 inches is inclusive of the waist. This is because I'll be attaching the elastic direct to this fabric. I'm not cutting out extra um, extra waist. So now I've labeled it. That is my waistline. This is my lap, and the other one is my short length. So at the lap, I'm using lap 26. So I'm going to come here and go ahead and impute my lap divided by 2, which is 13 inches divided by 2, which is 13 inches. And I went in by 2 inches, which is 11. And at the waistline, I also measured exactly 11 inches. And I'm going to use a straight line to collect the both of them. And I'm going to use my French curve also to give it a curve. Now at the short length, I'm also going to measure, impute that 11 inches plus half inch, which is 11 and half. And I'm going to get my hip curve and just give it a very simple curve. Now we are done with um, the front pattern. Now disregard this thing that I'm doing here. I don't really know why I did this stuff. Why? Guess I wanted to mark out um, what I need for my waistband. So now it's time to cut. We're done with the front pattern. Except the pocket because this um, short has a patch pocket. It doesn't have side pockets and back pocket. What it has is a front is what it has is front patch pocket. So I'm also going to show us how to achieve that. So to achieve the pocket, I'm going to, I want to be using um, a pocket of length 12 inches. I want to be using a pocket of length 12 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my 12 inches to the point that I want it. I'm going to get my eight i'm going to put eight inches at the lap line and i'm going to measure okay i used 11 inches not 12 inches i'm going to measure 11 inches and one inch like i'm just going to place my eight inches at the lap line and i'm going to go ahead and mark out 11 inches from there now i went in by two inches and i'm going to go down by seven inches and I'm going to give it a curve. This is the part that will allow me to put my hand. This is the part that will be open. So after this has been done, I'm going to extend this line. Please extend it to how many you want it to be. If you want it to be like three inches or more, just extend it to that point. So uh, the bottom part, I came in by 7 inches. And at the top part, I also came in by the same 7 inches. And I'm going to use my French curve to give it a curve. Now, Nipa took my light and my ring light. Um, Nipa took the light and 
the ring light that i'm using went off that's the reason why um this video is looking like this but we need to continue going it won't stop us okay so now that i've drawn the um the curve exactly how i want it to be what i'm going to do next is to pick up um the what i'll be using for the pocket i'll patch it on top of my chalk so that it can copy and i'm going to cut it out from there this is me trying to make a copy of what i've just drawn and yes i got um, a perfect copy because it's bold and i can see it So I'm going to cut it leaving half inch allowance all the way through. I hope you understand and i hope this is not very complicated i hope it's simple i hope my explanation is quite explanatory okay so this is it i'm placing it on top to see what it looks like and yes it's given so now what's left is to work on the back pattern the back of our shot so now I'm going to place the front on top of the back. I'm going to remove one and I'll just use the one that has the chalk. And I'm going to place my front pattern on top of my fabric. Now I'm going to go up by one inch. And I'm going to slant it to the side of the front and I'm also going to slant it to the tip of the crotch curve the next thing I want to do is to extend my lap line by two inches and at the short length I'm going to give a one and a half inch allowance I'm going to get my curve my hip curve and i'm going to give it that simple curve now the next thing i want to do is to get my french curve and also give my crush area the curve that it deserves and yeah this is basically it for the back pattern we are done now we're going to cut it out Remember to hit the subscribe button if you're yet to do that, guys. Okay, guys. So now that we're done with the short um, pattern and the blouse pattern, the next thing we want to do is to work on the neck for the blouse. We're going to fold our fabric in a bias form. and I'm going to mark out about one and a half inch on fold now after I made this blouse I was thinking that okay maybe next time I will use one inch because the one and a half inch was quite bold it was fine though but I think I wanted something slimmer so the one and a half inch was quite bold um, next time I might try one inch but in case you want it to be bold, in case you like how mine is, exactly how mine is, then one and a half inch is the measurement that I used when I placed it on fold. 
in a bias form. So you're going to go ahead and cut out the one and a half inch and remember for the neckline your length should be the length of the piece you're cutting should be above 20 inches mine is 27 so you can go as much as 30 inches it is better to have excessive when you're done you cut it out than to have shortage now i'm going to go ahead and fold it into two and i'm going to iron it after you're done holding it down with an iron you're going to get your um, hemming gum you're going to put your hemming gum inside and you're going to iron it to be flat and steady okay so now it's time to sew let's go over to our machine and sew so this is the sleeve pattern the sleeve attachment we're going to go ahead and hem it um twice by half inch you know what i mean by twice by half inch you can call it double hemming you fold in first by half inch and you fold in again by half inch so we're going to do that for the sleeve when we're done doing it for one, we'll do it for the other one too. Now the next thing we want to do is to get our front and um, and our back um, patterns. And we're going to join the shoulder. We're going to join one part of the shoulder. Okay, so after doing this, what we want to do next is to trim off trim off any excess that we have or any obstacles that we'll be having. And we're going to get our neck and we're going to attach it to the neckline. Please give a space of about one inch. No need starting from the tip. Just give a space of about one inch and then you're going to begin to sew by half inch. If you have a sager or some people call it weaving machine, please weave as you sew. I don't have that and this is my dress. It's not a client's dress. So I'm going to sew it anyhow I want it. So after you're done joining the neck piece to the neckline, you're going to go ahead and run a top stitch on, on it to hold it down. let your top stitch not be too tiny let it be about quarter of an inch and so now that you're done with this you're going to place it and cut out the excess that you have and then you're going to go over to your table and give it a very nice press now this is the trick if you iron it properly then it's going to turn out nice but if you do not then it's going to be hanging ironing is actually very essential when it comes to this type of neck so if you want it to look all curvy and relaxed you need to iron it properly and also sprinkle water while you do if you have um a steaming iron good for you if you do not please be like me get a can pour water inside it and use your water to iron so please give it a very nice press and curve it as you iron and then when you're done ironing we're going to go over to the machine 
make sure that this is quite smooth and then we're going to join the, the shoulder the remaining shoulder okay guys so now that the neckline is done what we want to do now is to attach the sleeve to the blouse so we are attaching it using half inch remember half inch is the allowance i added for this um blouse I didn't add anything more than half inch this is an english wear english wear doesn't need excessive allowance besides my fabric is stretchy and also this blouse is a loose fitted blouse So when you're done attaching it, you're going to trim out the excesses that you have. And then we're going to join the we're now going to join the sides, but I want it to have a little slit down there, so I'm going to be using seven inches. So I'm going to go ahead, get my chalk and measure out 7 inches and I'm going to join the sides all the way to the 7 inches line that I marked out. and i'll do the same for the other side too so after I've, i'm done joining the sides i flipped it over and guys this is what my blouse looks like my blouse is almost ready the next thing i want to do is to work on the slit and then i'm going to hem my blouse and that will be all so now i'm going to be bending the slit side by half inch and i'm just going to sew it down I'm going to sew it all the way to the point where I stopped joining the sides and I'm going to sew it across to the other side and then I'm also going to sew it down as well. And yeah guys this is it. I'll do the same for the other side and now it's time to hem it. I'm going to be doing a double hemming which is I'm going to fold in by half inch and fold in again by another half inch and I'm going to sew it so guys you all know that after the hemming we are already done with the blouse and the next thing we're going to work on is our shorts this is a very quick and easy tutorial it took me less than four hours to make this dress so um, it's a very simple outfit to make very simple and fine okay so now it's time to work on the shirt the first thing i'm going to work on is the pocket i'm going to go ahead and fold in the edges of my pocket by half inch and fold all of them in by half inch remember when it's difficult for you to sew sprinkle water and water will help it relax I'm going to go ahead and sew all the edges down. I'm going to go ahead and iron all the edges down by by half inch. I'm also going to go ahead and do this for the second pocket. 
now this is the first um part of my front panel i've already gone ahead to attach the sleeve to it now i'm going to go ahead and work on the other side to show you how i achieved that so this is the other side of the front i'm going to get my tape and i'm going to measure the point where i matter with my chalk i have about eight inches i'm going to turn it over and i'm going to add that eight inches mark at the front side now i'm going to get my pocket and i'm going to hem the curvy part but i feel like i have um i need to reduce here a bit i'm going to go ahead and reduce it by one inch because i feel like it's too big so i'm going to go in my chalk i'm going to draw out my curve again and i'm going to trim it out So now I'm going to do a single hemming, which is I'm going to fold in my half inch and I'm just going to run um, a stitch on top of it. okay so this is what i have now i'm going to get my front panel and i'm going to place this um exactly how it's supposed to be as you can see me do now i'm going to place it very well making sure that it's straight and not slanted and then i'm going to get my pins and hold them down in the necessary places okay so now i'm going to begin to sew i'm going to sew at the tip just at the edges to hold it down now this is reason why it's called a patch pocket Now after I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and also sew a second line. I'm going to give about quarter inch allow, um, space and I'm going to run a second line. I want my pocket to have double lines. So I'm going to give quarter inch space and I'm going to run my second line to also hold it down. And yeah, we are done and this is how to do your patch pocket. Trim off all the excesses you have and let's continue with the business of the day get the other piece that you've already worked on and you're going to join um, the center crotch line okay so now that we've joined the center crotch line as you can see this is what our shirt is looking like we're also going to get the back and we've also joined the back crotch line together and we're going to place the both of them right side facing each other and we are going to join the sides remember what we're using to join is half inch half inch is our measurement half inch is our allowance and half inch is what we're using So when you're done joining one side, you'll go ahead and join the other side too. As you watch, give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see.
so now that we are done joining the sides the next thing we want to join is the center leg so we're going to go ahead and also place them um equal sides and we're going to join it using half inch half inch is our measurement remember so this is the closure of the shot So now that we've completely closed our shirt, the next thing we want to do is to go ahead and uh, trim off any excess we have at the waistline. So just check check out for excesses and then you're just going to go ahead and trim off the excess in the way you're supposed to trim it off. Now the next thing we want to do is to hem the bottom of our shirt. Okay, I've already hemmed my the bottom of my shorts. I've hemmed it. I hemmed it by um, double hemming, half inch twice. And now it's time to work on the waist. I'm going to be using a one and a half inch elastic. And I've also measured about 26 inches. My actual waist is 30. I want it to be, I don't want it to be too tight. If not, I would have used about 22. But since I'm pregnant, I need something that is kind of loose which is why I went for 26 inches. I'm going to go ahead and place the elastic band. I'm going to close it um, using um, half inch. Place one on top of the other and I'm going to sew. Okay, so now that I am done sewing my elastic, I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the shorts now. Now watch me closely and see what I do. I'm going to place the elastic and I'm going to use my shorts, my fabric to cover it by half inch and I'm going to run a stitch on top of it. Make sure you draw your elastic as you sew. Because that's the only way it can contain what you have, the fabric you have. As you're sewing, you should draw your fabric. Draw it in a way that you can control it very well. Do not draw it excessively. Do not let it lose excessively. Just use your number six. okay so after you're done doing this you're going to fold in what you have left the elastic you have you're going to fold it in and then you're going to sew at the edges even if you don't understand what i'm explaining i hope you're seeing what i'm doing so please remember to sew strategically and also remember to draw as you sew arrange your your fabric as you sew okay so we're done attaching the elastic your your shirt can be wearable like this, but I like to run um, some center stitches to hold the elastic down and make it look more foreign. So I'm going to go ahead and run two more stitches inside, but I'm going to be giving equal space to run the two more stitches. Yeah, if it requires half quarter inch twice, then that's what I'm going to be using. But what I'm trying to say in essence is that whatever space I have, I'm going to be dividing it so that it can contain two stitches on top 
so guys this is it after you're done doing this you're basically done with your shorts and everything just wear your outfit and rock it if you're new to my channel you're welcome please give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel and i'm also saying thank you to my returning viewers and to my old subscribers please keep engaging in all my videos and posts and let's keep moving this channel forward thank you